First of all, thank you all for being here. Um, I wanted to start by uh, talking about the place we're in. So a couple of days ago, uh, we all mentioned the uh, three reasons to celebrate and congratulate uh, the UAE, your national day, um, the uh, 50th anniversary of it, Expo 2020, and of course, uh, the holding of the WPC, uh, which is in itself a, a remarkable achievement because as was mentioned earlier, it's the first major uh, intellectual event that is being held uh, in person. So I'm the Iraqi ambassador to the United States. And today for me is also a very special day. Um, we have actually two reasons to celebrate. The first is in about a week, we will be holding elections. They're important. There are second uh, post ISIS elections and uh, all signals indicate that uh, things are going uh, not ideally, but uh, reasonably well to, for us to be quite hopeful. Um, the second reason is that uh, today uh, has been decided to, by the Council of Ministers to be Iraq's national holiday. Uh, it marks the adhesion of the uh, Iraqi state uh, freshly out of the uh, um, post-World World War I mandate into the League of Nations. That happened 99 years ago. I mention it because uh, very shortly thereafter, the uh, representative of Iraq to the League of Nations was a certain Muzahim al Pachachi, who eventually be became prime minister. But I mention him because he is the father of Adnan Pachachi, who was uh, one of the uh, friends of uh, Sheikh Zayed, uh, Minister of State of Abu Dhabi, and also the person who raised the uh, uh, a UAE flag at the United Nations. And I mentioned this because he was, I was close to him, I was one of his advisors. And it is with him that I went back to Iraq after an absence of 30 years on board a UAE plane. So uh, if I'm here, it's partly because of that. So when I say thank you to the United Arab Emirates, really thank you. Not at all. Thank you. Um, We've had uh, so far two days of very high value content. Uh, we're all the richer for it. One of the things that I noticed uh, that I want to highlight is the fact that uh, such meetings um, show world complexity as it is. You know, the interplay between globalization, the need, uh, as was mentioned earlier by a previous speaker, uh, that to, in order for us to, to solve our problems, we need to work together uh, to face real problems. The impact of the kind of pandemic is one, uh, addressing the digital world. We've covered uh, regions of tensions between the EU, the US, China, the problems of finance. And we've spent some time talking about issues that really need uh, global governance in order to be addressed. Uh, global terrorism. Uh, I will mention that, for example, the anti-ISIS coalition now, led by the United States, but it's also including many countries, including the UAE in Iraq, uh, counts about 83 participants. Uh, the financial crisis. Uh, you all know the role of the G20 to address it. The pandemic, the role of uh, the World Health Organization and COVAX. And then, of course, the uh, major threats of the, to the environment, uh, which are existential. Uh, and uh, uh, to give you a number, I think at this point, we have 190 participants uh, or adherents to the uh, uh, Paris Accord. There are other issues that I think need to be addressed globally. For example, the fight uh, against corruption, which is one of the elements that, uh, that fosters and sponsors, sponsors uh, terrorism. But anyway, today here, we are uh, here to focus on the Middle East and uh, its relationships with external powers. And this is not new. The Middle East has been the focus of external powers uh, for quite a long time. 
All I need to do is mention Napoleon uh, following colonization by European powers of um, several countries in the Middle East, um, World War I, the League of Nations mandates, uh, the discovery of oil. Um, it's uh, interesting, uh, our friend Arno Boyac reminded me that in fact Total Energy uh, was born uh, many, many years ago in Iraq, uh, as was for, the, for that matter OPEC. The famous Quincy meeting, uh, the, uh, which uh, exemplifies the relationship between the United States and, uh, and uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, the creation of the State of Israel. Uh, then the Cold War with uh, the Baghdad Pact and other groupings. Um, then the Kuwait War uh, with Bush 41. The global war on terror with uh, Bush 43, uh, including Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, more recently, um, there was the advent of the pivot to Asia by uh, the Obama administration, withdrawal from Iraq, adhesion to the JCPOA, but eventually they had to return militarily uh, because of Libya, because of ISIS. And then of course, uh, the emergence of global concerns, uh, COP21 and uh, the need to address climate change. Followed by the Trump administration, Trump actually characterized his diplomacy by being very personal. Um, uh, the Trump administration pursued the war on terror, but it withdrew from the JCPOA and the Paris Accord. And that ratcheted up tensions in, in the region. Uh, um, uh, we all remember the killing of uh, General Qasem Soleimani in, in, in Baghdad. Uh, they started negotiations with the Taliban. Um, and then, of course, uh, culminating with the Abraham Accords uh, that were mentioned earlier. Of course, uh, many countries, um, this is, as was mentioned, a, a very controversial and, and, and emotional topic in the Middle East. Some countries have adhered, adhered for reasons of their own. Uh, others will not. Uh, I, can, I can hardly imagine that Iraq will adhere to the, uh, to the Abraham Accord. Um, but this, in fact, is an expression of um, national interest. Morocco adhered for its own reasons, as did Saddam. Now we're dealing with the Biden administration. Their focus is on China. It is quite clear that uh, to all of us, in fact, that our role, our part in the global mind space of Washington is going to diminish. Um, the focus will shift towards the Pacific. Um, the withdrawal from Afghanistan, which uh, many have considered, uh, in fact, I think uh, maybe Renaud Girard is here. Uh, he called it the first uh, strategic defeat of the United States. So we have a straight stage that is set of a region where you have an interplay between uh, global powers, uh, the ambitions of emerging regional powers, uh, and national interest by countries uh, who want to assert their sovereignty all under the umbrella of global concerns that we have to address all together. I mentioned climate change. Uh, water is an important, another important issue. Uh, food security, um, global terrorism. So to discuss these issues, we have a really stellar cast. Um, I'll introduce them as they, I give them the floor. Uh, I will start with our host, uh, uh, the ambassador of uh, the United Arab Emirates to uh, Turkey since 2016, His Excellency Khalifa Shaheen al Marhar. Um, he's a veteran a diplomat. He was posted to Syria and Iran prior to that, but had also postings um, in Japan and the United Nations. You have the floor, sir. Mm -hmm. 